Chair, gentleman yields back. Chair now recognize Ms. Lee from Pennsylvania for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, three hours and 45 or so minutes into this, uh, the Republicans' own witnesses have confirmed that they have seen no evidence of any evidence. Um, I think that is, if my Republican colleagues had a so-called smoking gun, they would have presented it by now and would have talked about it non well, the Can the gentle lady read a bank statement, an email, a text message? Are you asking her to yield, Reclaiming my Chairman? time. Thank you. Right. Reclaiming my time. Instead, we're sitting here with no fact witnesses and no evidence in this sham so-called impeachment to distract from their inability to fulfill their basic duty to fund and run our government. Republicans know the American people don't want their shutdown. So instead, the Republicans on this committee are attempting to divert and distract the American people's attention by spending taxpayer dollars on this sham impeachment hearing two days before they shut the government down in hopes that the media, and I don't just mean Fox News will fall for their scheme and give more airtime to the lies being told on this committee today than the real life impact their shutdown will have on even their own constituents' lives. In fact, in Chairman Comer's district, Republicans' shutdown will cost 8,937 of his constituents their paychecks. In Jim Jordan's district, Republicans' shutdown will cost 3,939 of his constituents their paychecks. In Marjorie Taylor Greene's district, Republican shutdown will cost 6,306 of her constituents their paychecks. In Lauren Bobart's district, Republican shutdown Democrats will cost are the party of shutdowns. And, you guys love shutdowns. Thank you very much. Oh. In uh, Lauren Bobart's district, Republican shutdown will cost 9,016 of her constituents their paycheck. In Paul Gosar's Arizona district, Republican shutdown will cost 12,349 of his constituents their paycheck. In Byron Donald's, 3,235 folks paycheck. In Andy Biggs, 8,433. Uh, in Lisa McLean, 7,286. In Scott Perry's Pennsylvania district and the capital of my commonwealth, Republican shutdown will cost 5,445 of his constituents uh, who will lose their paycheck. Indeed, when you add up, when you add it all up, Republicans shutdown will cost 217,583 of their constituents on this committee's paychecks, their income for who knows how long. Let that sink in for a second. Those are our mothers, our fathers, caretakers, brothers, sisters, moms, dad, grandmas, grandpas, friends, neighbors, beloved community members, veterans who won't know how their food or medicine will be paid for or where their rent money is coming from. Many of them vote Republican, but I'd bet you not one of them cares more about Hunter Biden's laptop or helping Kevin McCarthy keep his gig as leader or speaker of his dysfunctional caucus than they care about receiving their paycheck and making their ends meet. And so the Republicans on this committee are betting that we'll spend this hearing engaging in partisan bickering over their favorite buzzwords rather than talking about how the MAGA shutdown will crush all of our constituents. To be honest, I don't quite care about uh, private citizen Hunter, uh, whom the proper authorities are dealing with, or the cable news culture war distractions. I care about the seven million babies, children, mothers across this country who after Sunday will lose access to food and formula, over 10,000 in my district alone. I care about 300,000 families of 20,000 veterans who after Sunday could face eviction from their homes, rare diseases uh, and cancer patients whose experimental trials will be delayed for months. And I care about our seniors unable to get help with Social Security and Medicare. And make no mistake, their attacks are targeted, both in who's behind them and who are going to be hurt, hurt most. The most marginalized folks bear the brunt of these MAGA Republicans' attacks. Black folks, brown folks, trans folks, poor folks, disabled folks. Keeping that struggle in mind, we've had two hearings on the infant formula shortage on the subcommittee chair, chaired by Congresswoman McClain. Yet, with the 320,000 babies, women, and children in her home state of Michigan about to go hungry due to her party shutdown, down, it seems like my Republican colleagues only care about an issue when they can point the finger in another direction, much like what's going on in this embarrassment of a hearing today. Mr. Gearhart, in one of your recent op-eds, and you have repeated it here, you mentioned that a good test for assessing the constitutionality of a governmental action is to switch the names of the political parties
parties and the actors involved. If the outcome is the same, it is a good sign of neutrality. If the outcome is not the same, then there's a good chance that partisanship is the driving force. I think we can safely say that this inquiry would fail that neutrality test. And since I don't have time, I think we can say that we are here, America, in this sham hearing, prioritizing the political needs of the Republican Party, pushing a lie for Donald Trump as you go hungry and you lose your homes. Shameful. At I the request back. of the witnesses, we're going to take a 10-minute recess.